turn to the book of Joshua. And uh, as you do, I've got two things I've got to say real quick. Woo, we said a lot of stuff already this morning. We're going to get into words in just a second. But Sean Moss is here, Sean and Lacey and your family. Sean, would you just wave? I want everyone to see who Sean is right there. Sean, we welcome you back. Sean, I just, you're like, who's Sean? Why are we clapping for Sean? Some of you might not have any idea, but Sean was, if you ever hear me tell the beginning story of Pathway and how we started, we went from a life group of about 13 people, five kids and eight adults, he was one of the adults right there. And Sean lives over in South Bend now, and, um, but Sean was actually one of our staff members and absolutely critical in the early days of our church. Honor you, Sean. So glad to have you with us just to come and visit us today. Good to have you. Um, hey, also, I want to I wanna talk to, to you just real quick about being a, uh, a foyer worshiper. Just bottom line, here it is, a foyer worshiper. What in the world is that? Well, um, I, let me just say this real quick. Josh has already shared some numbers with you, but if you even go back to January of 2022, that's one year ago, 2022, if you just add up average our attendance in January of 2022, a year ago, we're at about 233, 233. We're still coming out of COVID at that point, 233, okay. January so far this year at Pathway here, a year later, 326, 2. 33, 326. Does that say anything to you? You are now, if you're, if you're attending and you're part of Pathway, you're worshiping every week with 50, 75 people that weren't here a year ago. And I just want to tell you again, we are so glad you're here. I believe it's by, not by chance that God brought you here. I believe you're here because God has something to speak into your life here. He wants to speak in your life as you come and are part of this church body. But there's also a piece of you that God brought you here because he knows this church needs your gifts, your talents, your abilities, and you bring those to the Lord. And we're excited about that. One of the challenges, wee little challenge, wee little challenge, is um, it's just seating capacity. I mean, we've done everything we can to squeeze chairs and still leave room for some altars, prayer area. We've done everything we can. And so you you obviously are seeing that we're, we're starting to put people out in the foyer. Here's all I'm asking. Would, would, could I have 12 families today? 12 families that, um, you know, when I say a family, you might be single. Well, you're a family. So could I have 12 of you today? Would 12 of you sign up that, you know what, Scott? Every fourth week, I would be glad to be a foyer worshiper. And what that means is, is I'm going to hang out till about 10.05, somewhere in there. I'm going to just, if I have a, a spouse or if I have kids or whatever, whoever it is, whoever's with me, I say, let's just hang out here in the foyer. And if it turns out there's plenty of room in the sanctuary, 10.05, come on in, squeeze in, all right? Come on in, have a seat. If there's not, and we end up having to have worshipers out there and set up some, uh, you, the past two Sundays we've had to do this, set up some rows out in the foyer, would you be willing to sit out there? You say, what, what, what are you asking me to do? Basically, I'm just asking you to do what you're already doing. Just come and worship. But would you worship out in the foyer and uh, sit in the front row and just worship, clap, whatever, stand up. Don't just sit there. Don't s stand around talking to everybody else. But let, let's just turn that foyer. If we have people worshiping out there, let's turn that foyer into a worship space, another worship space. Would you help us to do that? If we had 12 families, who then there'd be like maybe three of you a week. If we had three families every week who we would just, we'd, we'd let you know, sign you up, and then you'd be out there, be our, our worship. If you'd be willing to do that, Kids, sign your parents up. Let's do this. Let's come on. Um, uh, grandkids, even sign your grandparents. Anyone, we need, I need, we need, we'd like to have 12 families, three a week. For, uh, so every fourth week, you'd be on call. It might be a thing where you, you it's not even going to be an issue, but there's also going to be times when we will, it will be an issue. So in the short term, would you be willing for your family to worship in the foyer? And then once we dismiss the kids, we value that. We value having the kids in with us. You say, well, why don't we just have kids go up to kids? Or we value having kids with us for our, our worship time, feeling and sensing the moving of the Spirit, having them worshiping with their parents. When we take communion, we value having them in here. We value them seeing everything that happens in the midst of our worship service. So we've already crossed that bridge. Um, so we're going to keep them here. But as soon as we dismiss those kids, then you come and you squeeze in here. The goal is, is once we dismiss those kids, can everyone just kind of squeeze together and let's make room so everybody in the foyer can come in here and find a seat to worship uh, or to hear the message and take part here there. So how do I sign up, Scott? I'm so glad you asked. You can go to the Church Center app and you can go the place where it says sign up. Aha. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> we make it easy for you. You can sign up there. You can go online under, under, under upcoming events or just take the, the Connect card in the back of the seat in front of you. Write your name on it the old-fashioned way and then say, hey, our family would be glad to be a, a four-year worshiper, four-year worshiping family, whatever you want to say, an FW. We can even do that. FW. I'll be an FW. Whatever. If your family would be willing to do that, I need 12 of you. We need 12 of you. Why? Because we love our guests so much. We love what God God is doing in this church so much right now that I would be willing to give up my seat to go sit in the foyer during worship so that we could make space because we want our guests to have the best spots right here, okay? Enough said. I need to see a few more of your hands moving here, doing something, but let's, let's get signed up. Okay, are you to the book of Joshua yet? If you're not, you're never going to get there, so ask for help. But Joshua, do you know who Joshua was? Um, most of you probably know who his, his uh, predecessor was. His name was Moses. Moses, one of the most uh, uh, famous things that Moses did was what? Um, well, he did a lot of stuff. But one of them is God gave him the Ten Commandments. Moses was the first one to have a tablet and get a download. <laughs> Ooh. What if someone, someone asked, what if, what if they would have text messaged the Ten Commandments to Moses? It would have looked maybe something like this. Say it out loud with me if you can figure it out. No. Okay, that's the first one. Second one. Don't worship pictures. Pictures or idols. Yeah, you got it. No OMG. Come on. Now, that's one of my pet peeves. Oh, you're going too fast, dude. No work on weekend. Saturday for now, Sunday later. Okay, that could, I mean, what is a Sabbath? It's not necessarily, it has to be said. But anyhow, let's keep moving. One at a time. Okay. Okay. Your mom and dad are cool. Honor your father and mother. Keep going. That's pretty simple. Keep going. Okay, we'll leave that one there. Keep going. <laughs> Don't steal, okay. Bef, best friend, I think, is where we're going there. Don't lie to your best, like to your best friend, okay. Just a few more here. There's only 10, okay. <laughs> Mi, could you just see God saying, M-I-O-B, mind your own bees, business. Okay, and then uh, talk to you later, Yahweh. Okay, if that just offended you, my apologies. Let's move on. Moses, Moses, Moses led the people. God used him to lead God, God's people out of Egypt, right? And then they, they wandered through the desert for 40 years, and then Moses died. So who's going to take the lead now? It was Joshua. Joshua, you got to understand, as you, as you think about Joshua, he was there for much of what Moses did. He saw what, what happened, and, and Joshua was there seeing all the fireworks and all the stuff happening. And then in Deuteronomy chapter 34, it says this, Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. It was time for Joshua to take the lead. We talked about this two weeks ago. Joshua was probably in his 70s at this point. We could debate that, but probably somewhere between 69 and 79 years old. But here's what I want you to know. Here's what I believe God wants you to know. The end of last year, as I was just praying about this year, I always like, God, what do you want us to kick off the year with? This is the passage. This, this, this passage of Joshua is always good stuff. But I'm just telling you, this, I believe, is a, what, what we'd call a rhema word, where God takes a message, a passage of Scripture, and applies it to this season, this time, this situation. And I just want to tell you, I believe for all of us today, this is God's word for us as a church, and you as a couple, you as a family. Here it is. Be strong and courageous in your faith. It's not time for limp wristedness. It's not time for mamby pambiness. It's not time for a wimpy Christianity. It's time that we're bold and we're strong and we're forward about who we are in Christ. Hmm. It's going to take courage to do what God is calling you to do in 2023. 
God is calling you to be a leader, not a follower. He's calling you to be an influencer, not the influenced. Whether it's in school, whether it's at work, whether it's in the community, whether it's in your friendship circle, whatever that looks like, he's calling you to be strong and courageous. And here's the deal. I'm talking biblical courage here. Not just courage, courage, but biblical courage. What does this look like? Well, we started this message two weeks ago. So if you want to feel the, the full effect of these four points, in fact, there's notes in front of you. If you want to grab those notes, and the last two, I'll have you fill in the blanks. But the first two we've already talked about, let me hit them just real quick. Number one, courage arrives when there is clear direction from God. Courage arrives when there's clear direction from God. And that's what we talked about two weeks ago. You look at Joshua chapter one, verse one through four. I'm not necessarily gonna read it right now. You can read it later. But God just kind of lays it all out there. Here's God's direction for you, Joshua. This wasn't gonna be a cakewalk. The children of Israel had history of unbelief, rebellion, complaining. And how was someone gonna lead these people? Be strong and courageous, Joshua. Here's the plan. Always, always start with God. Start with God's plan, what God's direction is. What is it you need today? What is it that you're focusing on? Like, is is an issue before you in your family, in your job, in your life? What is it you're struggling with? Let me just encourage you today. Let's be courageous and let's let's step out in courage in a way that can only come when we hear a voice from God, when we hear God's direction and we have God's direction. Scott, how do I get God's direction? First place you start is right here, am I right? With the scripture. This is the first place you start. What does God's word say? What is God, is even in your just regular devotional time, what is God saying to you from his word? Not just picking and choosing, and, and but God, what are you saying about this situation from your word? Along with prayer. We, we believe, excuse me, it doesn't matter what we believe, the Bible says prayer to God is powerful. When we pray to the great I am, he speaks. In fact, later on in uh, John chapter 10, look at this. Jesus answered, uh, I, I I did tell you, but you did not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you're not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. My sheep hear my voice. I want to I tell you, it's, it's a lie to think that God doesn't still speak because he does, and that it's a lie to think that you can't hear God's voice in your spirit, in your heart. It's a lie, because God created you as a believer to be able to hear his voice. Now, Scott, have you ever heard the audible voice of God? I don't think I ever have. But I hear him speak to me regularly from his word, and then times of prayer and fasting and, and just really just asking the Lord, Lord, what is this? What is it? And I feel him leading and guiding and directing. It may not be like, turn right at the Essen house or something like that. I mean, I, I, I receive that, Lord, but it, it might not be something like that. But it's, it's, it's general nudge. It's, it's kind of like this. If you struggle to hear the voice of the Lord, you struggle to hear the direction of God, let me just share an illustration. Megan and I, my wife and I, we've been married for 27 years now. So here's the deal. Do you know, I could be like turned this way with my eyes closed, just looking at something, and Megan could walk in this room, and if, I, if she started talking, I could pick her voice out. I could say, my, my wife's here. If she laughed, I would know my wife's here. I mean, if, my, my, if she clears her throat, I know my wife's here. I mean, I, I just, I can tell. Why? I've spent 27 years with that lady. And I can not only tell you that she's in the room, I can probably tell you what she's going to think about what's happening in the room. <laughs> and what she's going to think about what you're saying and what you're saying and what you're saying. And, and, and she can even better than that, she can tell you what I would think because I'm, I'm a pretty simple person. She's like, well, I can tell you right now, Scott's not going to like that. Or Scott's going to love that. or that. Why? Because we've been together for 27 years. We've spent time together. And you're like, man, Scott, I struggle hearing the voice of the Lord. Well, let me just... I mean, I struggle to hear what God's saying. Have you been reading his word? I mean, I know for some of you this is new because you're like, well, I go to church every Sunday. Isn't that enough? Well, let me just ask you, have you taken time to spend time? Because the more you get to know this, the more you get to know him. Jesus is the truth. 
The more you get to know the Word of God, the more not only do you get to know Him and hear His voice, but the more you get used to, well, I think that's probably the way that God would think on this. I think I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about a scripture. I'm not quite sure what scripture, but I can tell you from, I've heard enough scripture to know that I think this would be what God says about this situation. So um, get clear direction from God. That's, that's the main thing I'm saying. I got to keep moving. Number two, here it is. Um, courage solidifies with confidence in God's presence. God said it over, verse, verse five. He says, um, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And verse nine, the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Don't ever forget, God is with you. He is with you. Be encouraged. And ultimately, the goal is that you point people to Jesus, not to you. Do you remember? I mean, uh, the, the, the goal is not that people look at us and say, boy, he's so strong or she's so strong. She has such a strong constitution. Her constitution is so constituted, she's just amazing. No, we want them to say, you know what? I knew her, her mom, and her mom was a whoo. And her dad wasn't too far behind. But boy, when I see her, I see the hand of God. I see, okay, th- maybe that's pushing a little too far. But, but, but you get what I'm saying? When, when people see you, that they could see the hand of God on you, that they could say, there's no way she could do that on her own. There's no way he could be so, just, I knew him back in the day. And now to see what's happening, that's nothing short of God Almighty. Let's let people not only, let's not just be encouraged to know that God, God is with us, but let's point others to the fact that God is with us. It's through him that I can do all things. Third thing is this. Let's talk about this now. Courage always pushes towards a plan of action. Courage always pushes toward a plan of action. Fill that in your notes, will you? I think there's a blank there. You got to fill it in. You're not going to sleep unless you do. Courage always pushes toward a plan of action. How many times, in fact, I want you to follow with me, verse six, verse six, it says, be strong and courageous. Everyone say once. Because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Verse seven, be strong and courageous, twice. Everybody say twice. Twice. Very good. (laughs) Be careful to obey all the laws my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Now jump over to verse 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Everyone say thrice. Thrice. Once, twice, thrice. Close enough. Thrice. How many times? Does God tell him in this same conversation over and over and over again, be strong, be courageous. Take it on. Let's do this. Come on. God says, I'll be with you. God says, get a plan, okay? Get a plan to get, I'm going to be with you. And now, there, there's, there's got to be a, an action. you got to put some action into this thing. Do you think God would, um, uh, would just leave him high and dry and just say, I'm just going to give you courage just for courage's sake? No, he's giving him courage and telling him to be strong because there is a plan of action that God had for him. God says, take courage. I've given you my direction. Take courage. I'm going to be there with you. Now let's have some action. Be strong and courageous. You know, um, let's step out in faith. Let's let 2023 be the year where we, we step out. We're strong. We're courageous. Let's flex our faith muscle. You know, when you think about faith, you really ought to think about it as a muscle. Now, I don't know if this surprises you or not, but I don't spend a lot of time at the gym. But yeah, okay, for some of you, you're just absolutely shocked. With a physique like this, you're amazed. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. Faith is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. You say, how can I be a man of faith? How can I be a woman of faith? How can I be a man of action, a woman of action? Be, how can I build courage? How can I have more courage? Here it is. Be obedient to Scripture. Be obedient to God. Every time you're obedient to do what God has asked you to do, that muscle gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Your faith muscle. Let's do something significant for God. And now as we look at Joshua, this wasn't his first rodeo. I mean, this may be the first time where he was the final say, where he was the big cheese, the big kahuna. Moses is gone. Now here's Joshua. But I'm telling you, 
He had experienced all kinds of moves of God. He had experienced all kinds of things that happened. He saw it, and he was obedient. And not that he was 100% always obedient, but majority of the time he was obedient. And God strengthened his faith and said, come on, I've got a plan. Here's the plan of action. Be strong. Be courageous. And this year... As you're thinking right now, I want you to think right now, and we're going we're gonna to pray here in a moment, and I'm going to ask the Lord to just speak and give direction to you. But as you think about 2023, what is it that's just been kind of just out there, and you know it needs to be dealt with? You know you need to confront it. You know you need to deal with it. But you've just been pushing it off for whatever reason. I believe God's saying, listen, in 2023, I want you to bring it out. And I'm going to heal it. I'm going to restore it. I'm going to renew it. I'm going to do something. In it. But you've got to be strong and courageous. Where is it that you're waffling on your faith? Where is it that you're having a hard time being bold for your faith? This isn't just uh, politically, though. I think, you know, there's a time and a place where we need to take a stand. It's America. We have that opportunity to do that. But I'm talking like in your faith where you're strong and courageous. And as you move forward, as you take things on, as you're like, okay, I'm going to confront this. I'm going I'm to ask the Lord to give me a plan. I'm going to have great courage from God. And I'm going to believe, and I know that he is with me. I'm going to trust he's going to be with me. I'm going to focus on this thing, whatever this thing is. But I want to I just remind you of something. As you focus in on this, the enemy isn't just going to sit there and let it happen. He's going to try to come against you. He's going to bring doubt, fear, disbelief. There's going to be times when you feel like you've taken two steps forward, and boy, isn't God great. And, this, and then all of a sudden you feel like you're taking a step back. And, and then you're going to feel like thrown in the towel. But that's where be strong and courageous. Know what it is God has called you to do, what God is leading you to do about whatever that situation is. I'm leaving that to the Holy Spirit. But what I'm saying is as you attack things in 2023, God is saying do it by being strong and courageous. Take it on. Let's confront it. And let me just encourage you believers, listen to me. There's even going to be people that are going to come against you that are, are working out of what they would say is even the, the, uh, the, of Jesus Christ. In the name of Christ, they're going to push back against you. And, and you're going to take a stand on a biblical, subs- a biblical issue, whatever that issue may be. You're going to take a stand, and there's going to be other people who are Christians that are going to say, well, my God doesn't believe that. And, I, and what you're going to say is, listen, I don't care what your God says. I don't care what my God, I, I, the God of the Bible is the one that I'm listening to, and I'm following this. And I, we've seen it even the past few years. I've talked about it. We've seen it right here in, in our own community where people in the name of Christ are saying things that just go directly against Scripture. <clears throat> so what are you going to do with that? What do you do when you have family members who take a piece of scripture and they twist it, and, and in the name of Christ, they're twisting scripture. And they say, well, I'm, 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 I go to church, I'm a Christian, but I don't agree with you on that. Well, here's the challenge. Are you gonna give in then and say, well, okay, I guess you're right, and I'm, or I guess it's not, or are you gonna be strong and courageous in what you know God has asked you to do and what God is saying to you? Some people say, well, my God's a God of love. Oh, our God is a God of love. And the problem is, is that we've allowed the world to distort the definition of love. That's the problem. By what, 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 what folks outside of church, and, and I realize there may be some here today that maybe you haven't put your faith in Christ, and just, just hear me out. You can feel free to disagree with me if you'd like. But here's the thing. We've, we've got a distorted view of love. And what, what most would say in our, in our nation, even the NHL this week and a situation that popped up there in the National Hockey League, is that if, if the only way to show love to someone is to 100% agree with them, and if you disagree with them on something, then you're not loving and you're not right and, and this is bad and you're bad and we need to cancel you and we need to just write you off. And uh, that's not the definition of love. Here's, here's the thing. When you have a biblical worldview when this is where your view starts, here's, here's, one, here's what we know. God is love. He wrote the book on love. You know, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. Absolutely, our God is so loving. And he loved us so much that he set up boundaries for us. Just like a good parent, when my kids were little, we had boundaries. In fact, you know, we have a fenced-in yard. 
It's a boundary we set up. It was already there when we bought the house, so I'm glad it was, because then I didn't have to set it up. But it was already there. This is a boundary. We have a boundary. Don't play in the road. We had boundaries. Hopefully, if you allow your kids to be on social media, hopefully you got some really strong boundaries for your kids. Why? Because you don't like your kids. Because you're just like, ah, oh, there's little things running around, eating food in the house, and messing up. No, you love your kids. You want what's best for them. And they might say, but I got to go get the kickball. It just went all the way down the street. I'll go get it for you. You're too young. I can't trust you. You're gonna, something bad is going to happen. The dog's going to run away or whatever, whatever it is. You, you set up boundaries. God loves us so much. He says, I set up boundaries for you. Not because I don't like you, but because I love you. And you can, you can, you can stay in this boundary with relationships. And you can um, be, uh, let the fruit of the Holy Spirit of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness, or you can step over and be rude. <laughs> well, there's going to be consequences, but here's the boundaries within our relationships with one another. You think about uh, um, uh, human biology and sexuality. God says, I've created you wonderfully as a man. I've created you wonderfully as a woman. There's, there's, I've created you. Now, you can step outside those boundaries and say, well, I'm in, in just kind of go different directions, whatever direction. You can step outside of that. But the word of God says, it, and it, God's not saying, you know what? Um, uh, I, 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 I'm so frustrated with you people, so I'm giving you boundaries. No, he's saying, I am a loving God. That's why I set up boundaries for you. That's why I give you my word so that you can be clear on the best life you could ever live is one as closely lived out according to the word of God. Now, I know I'm, I'm kind of I'm taking a rabbit trail here, but this is what's happening right now, real life in our community. The hotter getting hotter and the colder getting colder. And there are people who call themselves Christians, but the challenge is, do they really trust in the God of Christianity, the one true word of God, the one true God? Are they really willing to sell out to that? And I'm saying to you, you will never, ever go wrong staying true to the word of God. You will never, ever go wrong doing what the word of God says. And this year, 2023, I'm not a prophet of doom and gloom, but I'm just telling you, there, there are going to be people who, in the name of Christ, are going to get mad at you and push back. They're in your family. They've been in your friend circles your whole life. But because of a stance, that a biblical stance you take, they're not going to like you. What are you going to do? All that to say, be strong and courageous. God is saying, be strong and courageous and courageous. Courage always pushes you towards a plan of action, and that plan of action is this. Be strong and courageous. We must be comfortable, and I, I listen, I like people to like me. I really do, but we got to be comfortable with, with, with opposition. In fact, someone said it this way, uh, uh, opposition, um, you know you're flying over the right target when you're being shot at, Opposition means you stay strong and courageous in the Lord. Listen, if it's been a long time since someone's really taken a jab at you, let me ask you, how strong and courageous are you being in your faith? I'm not just talking because you said something dumb or you said something stupid. It's like they need to jab at you. It's like, come on, you knucklehead. No, I'm talking like you took a stand for righteousness. You took a stand for godliness, and someone was like poking at you and say, well, you... You're, and they just throw out whatever X, whatever, whatever name they want to throw out, out at you, and they start poking at you. When's the last time that happened? Listen, church, we must be strong and courageous in our faith. Let's trust God. The fourth thing is this. I've already said it several times in this message, the last time and this time, but let me just clarify it again. Courage is anchored in the word of God. As I was preparing this message, I... I'll be honest, I was inspired. Um, um, Crawford Lorenz, I think was the pastor's name. I heard him preach a message on being strong and courageous. I was inspired by something he said, particularly on this point, but I had to change the words. Because here's the deal. Courage is anchored in the word of God. We used to sing when I was a kid, I'm anchored in Jesus. And are you anchored by the word of God? This is the thing that anchors me. In verse 7 through 8 of Joshua chapter 1, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let the book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. 
Be strong and courageous. Courage is anchored in the word of God. Success or failure in a mission is tied to your relationship to the truth of God's word. In this passage, the book of the law refers to the first five books of the Bible, right? That's what uh, um, uh, those writings and those teachings are, are much of what, what um, Joshua would be uh, receiving here. Like, stay true to this. But the fact of the matter, you know, you've got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, um, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is kind of like Moses' last message. And he's like, just, I want to make sure you guys get this, because some of you forgot it already. And so he's writing Deuteronomy. It's a great book. All these are great books. But all this stuff, God says, listen, hold on to this stuff. Don't turn from this stuff. This book is meant to be more than a, a book we esteem or hold highly. It's meant to be something we build our lives on. And we build our lives around. We think on it day and night. This is our starting point. As you read the book of Genesis and you see how God amazingly created us, wonderfully created us. You say, God, I'm going to rest in that. I'm going to trust you. As you read about Abraham, as you read about what, how he moved with Isaac, as, as, you, as you read about even going back to Noah and how God was faithful with Noah, and, and you just read all the way through the Old Testament, all the way through the New Testament, as you get in the Word, it, it ought to build your, your, your faith. It ought to build your courage that if God can shut the mouths of lions many, many years ago, he can shut the mouths of lions today. He can shut those that are coming against us and standing against he no weapon formed against me shall prosper anyone who rises up against me is going to fall because god is with me the word of god is my anchor i'm holding strong to that think about that build your life on the word of god no you'll never go wrong following the bible let me take this a, ver- uh, uh, a step further and just just straight up out of the word here joshua chapter 1 verse 8 what's the first thing he says he says proclaim the word Don't let the book of law depart from your mouth. Deuteronomy chapter 6, you know this. Be strong, uh, excuse me, (laughs) Deuteronomy chapter 6, there it is. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. The idea here is, mom, dad, parents, this is our call. And and aunts, uncles, grandpas, grandmas, this is our call. It's to talk about the word of God. Regularly point our kids back to the word of God. There's something powerful that happens when you and I declare the word of God out loud. Say it over your children. Speak it over your children so they can hear you. Hebrews 4.12 says this, for the word of God is living and active. It's, it's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates uh, even to dividing soul, spirit, joints, and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Let's be speakers of the word proclaimers of the word and then the next one he says this is meditate on it he says meditate on it day and night when we think of meditation we kind of think of kind of out there weirdo you know transcendent all these big words and oh no 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 here here it is have you ever have you have you ever heard someone like not chew gum but chaw on gum you know here's chewing gum here's chawing Do that with scripture. Like, I mean, like, chew that thing up. Just get everything you can out of that. You've heard me say, in fact, we were with the leadership team, our elders and our, and our staff and, and um, others. And we, we, were, we were in our meeting this week, and I challenged them with this verse from Matthew chapter 4. Jesus said, it's written, man cannot live, will not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Let me ask you something. Are you living on, on the word of God? Are you chawing on it? Maybe you're just a little more polite, so you're just like, I'm more of a just kind of a chewer. No, chaw. Just like, I mean, eat that thing. It's like, let get every piece of juicy Holy Spirit power word from God out of every single verse. Chew on that thing. Go ahead, read the Bible in a year. I've been there, done that. But more importantly than that, just even get one verse, get a paragraph, get a couple verses, and just think on it, meditate on it, think on it. Let God speak to you. Meditate on the Word of God. When the trial comes, you ought to have so much of the Word of God in you that when that trial comes and it's screaming, trial! 
law, issue, bad stuff. That, that what we can do is we just turn up the volume of Scripture. But greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. And my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Thou, O oh Lord, art a shield about me. You're the glory and the lifter of my head. You want, you want courage. That's what I'm talking about. You want courage. Anchor your life. Anchor yourself with the word of God and let it pour courage inside of you. Let it build your faith. Anchor yourself in the word of God. The third thing is this. He says, do everything written in it. Joshua chapter one, verse eight. So that you may be careful to know everything written in. To know everything? Is that what it says? No, to do everything. To do everything. You see, we could just be sitting at the table of the Lord feeding ourselves with the word of God and getting getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm just full of the word of God. (laughs) But if there's no outflow, we're missing the point for the word of God. If there's no, if I'm, if I'm not doing it, if I'm not acting it out, if I'm not, I, we can talk all about being a Jesus filled spirit, Jesus centered spirit filled church. Amen. 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 That's right, Pastor, I want to be all about the Word of God. Amen. But if we're not doing it and humbling ourselves before a mighty God on a regular basis saying, God, kill my pride. Empty me of me. We're a prideful bunch. And we need to ask God, crucify my pride. Put it on the cross again and again and again and again. I humble myself before you, God. I don't want to just be a hearer of the word, getting so full of how much of the word of God I know, and this preacher says this, and this, and Stephen Furtick this, and D.D. Jakes this, and, and, and I know this person said this, and I just, I'm sharing all their memes and everything. I don't, I don't care if you, sp- if you send another meme of mine or someone else. Are you doing it? Are you living it? Let's be strong and courageous. Let's anchor ourselves to the word of God. Do everything written in it. You know, I, I, I rarely get nervous when I get up to preach a message. Now, some of that is because I've been doing it for over 25 years. But even more than that, it's because this isn't a speech. I'm not giving you a talk. This isn't a TED talk. It would have been shorter. <laughs> and more concise, right? 10 minutes or less. Not Scott Miller. He's half a half hour at least. Um, this isn't a talk. You see, if I had to get up here and tell you all about what I learned and how good I am and, and my thoughts, I'd be nervous. You know, every Sunday I get up here, I've studied all week, and I'm just, I can't wait. I'm typically sitting on the edge of my seat. It's like, get out of the way. Come on. Here's the word of God. I'm not the answer. Christ is the answer. I don't have all the answers, but the word of God does. Anchor yourself in it. Trust him. Trust the word of God. You don't have to be nervous. Man, there's times when I've taken stance in this community against what, going against the flow, not because I thought this way, but it's because the word of God says it, and so I believe it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand on it. I'm gonna be strong and courageous. And when it comes time to take a stand, take a stand, anchor yourself in the word of God, and let's be a church that's strong and courageous, full of the love of God to the point where we love people enough to speak the truth and to live the truth. You see, for someone to say it's not love, no, the most loving thing I can do is to look my kids in the eye and say, no, ma'am. When they were little, not so much now they're growing up, but when they were little, you're not going to do that. You're not going to do that. Why? Because we got some boundaries here, because I love you. And God says, I I've called you to be saved. I've called you to have righteousness, peace, and joy. I've called that you could have life and life more abundantly, life full. You want a life that's full with purpose and a plan? Give your life to Jesus Christ today. Like, surrender your life to Christ. 
Turn your life completely over to him. Admit the fact that you're a sinner. We all have. We all are. All of us are sinners. Repent of your sins and then buckle up because God has a plan that doesn't put you at the center, but it puts the one who created the universe, the one who died on the cross, the one who rose again at the center of your life. Jesus is real. He's alive. And he's brought you here today to hear the message that Jesus Christ came, he lived, and he died for your sins. And he rose again and he's alive. If you haven't surrendered your life to Christ, before you can be strong and courageous, you got to start right there. You got to start right there.